Hello all you learners, Tyler from 10 Thumbs Pro, and today we're talking soloing, blues soloing, and I'm gonna show you how to use double stops to give your solo power, intensity, ferocity, specifically using thirds. Printable tab for this tutorial by becoming a Patreon, links in the notes, as well as the description. You'll also see my email there if you want some one-on-one -on -one lessons and links to our other social network. New guitar every Monday, hit subscribe if you like this kind of content, never miss a lesson. Let's do it. Grab your guitar brain attention span, follow me on in, and let's learn how to shred. So we're gonna teach this concept in the key of E. So really quick, if you don't know already, a 12 bar blues in the key of E is four measures of E7, followed by two measures of A7, two measures of E7, and then the turnaround, B7, A7, E7, B7. And in the turnaround, sometimes you'll see some variations. Maybe you'll see a diminished chord in there, or maybe it'll go to the B7 on the and or something like that. But that's the general harmony we've got going. When you're first learning to solo in the blues over this, it's just all E minor pentatonic. And when you're doing that and you're jamming with your friends, you're probably noticing some of it sounds really, really, really cool. Some of it cool, and then some of it, yeah. And that's because at first, you're kind of just throwing spaghetti. You don't really know how to come in or come out, timing, you don't know ornamentation, and you really don't know how to connect with what you're playing with those chords. A good solo connects what you're playing here with the underlying harmony. A great way to do that is double stops. Now. We're gonna go ahead and break it down. These double stops are what are called thirds. And there's two kinds of thirds. You have a minor third and a major third. A minor third would be on the B string, for example, 12th fret and the 10th fret. The major third would be 12 and 11. You can hear kind of a minor chord and a major chord, okay? We can use these thirds in our solo. So they're really easy to use. Let's start with how to find them first. Now, in the key of E, the easiest way to find this is to find the E note on the B string. We have an E note here, oops, on the 12th fret of the B string. So once we find that, we're gonna go down two frets from our root note, and on the B string, we're gonna play directly above the E. So we find the E, E blues, E note, then go down two and put on the string above that, directly above it. This is our first double stop. From this one, we're going to slide our index finger down to nine, lift our ring finger, and put our middle finger on 10. And then from here, we go down two frets to seven and eight, okay? Now, these thirds come from the dominant scale. We're creating these from the mixolydian. And it's a little interesting because you think, okay, the key of E, E note, these thirds are probably from E mixolydian. Actually, we're using the thirds from the A mixolydian scale. And that's a little confusing. I'm not going to go into the theory of exactly why because it'd be a long explanation and it really wouldn't do you much good. It's more important how. Now, how, find that root note, and plug in those shapes. Now I can use the thirds from the E dominant, so maybe someday we'll go into a deeper concept. This is more for your beginning soloers looking for something to connect a little bit more with the harmony, okay? Now, there are more of them. You can keep going, but really when you're just getting started, using these three works perfectly. So let's take a look at some licks. A really good one would be three triplets on the first, third, one triplet on the second, and then resolving right here on the first beat. So we're gonna go one pola, two pola, three pola, four pola, one. And a triplet, if you need extra help, I'll link a video here, means we're playing three notes over one beat. One pola, two pola, three pola, four pola, one. Now, you didn't know triplets, you could go one and two and three and four and one. In fact, that lick sounds great too. 
will be one and two and three and four and one. That sounds fabulous too, and the triplets sound fabulous. Another lick could be mixing these two. We'll do for the third, the triplets, and here we're gonna do quarter notes. We're gonna go one pola, two pola, three, well, one pola, two pola, three pola, four, and one. That sounds amazing as well. All of these sound amazing. You don't have to play them at the same time either. We can go one and two and three and four and one. And that's gonna sound amazing as well. Really any combination of any rhythm is gonna sound fabulous. You play those over the E7 and then you mix that with the E minor pentatonic and the E blues scale, you get some really cool results. Sounds amazing, right? Now when it goes to the A7, how do we find the notes that are gonna sound good over the A7? Well, these are coming from the D dominant. You don't really need to know that. What you need to do is find the A note on the, B, on the E string and go down two frets, the ring finger right above it. So we got three and five. Index goes down one fret, then we lift up our ring finger and play here. Now we have two and three, two more frets, open at one. So when the harmony goes to the A7, if you wanna do this trick over that chord, you would do it right here. Now that, of course, if you don't want the lower register, you can take that all the way up an octave. Five plus 12 is 17. Well, really what we need to know is three plus 12 is 15. So you find the 15th fret and the 17th fret. And those are gonna sound great over the A7. An example, if you want to really highlight the harmony, you can just do your blues vocabulary with your minor pentatonic over the E. And then when it goes to the A7, jump into the double stops and then back to minor pentatonic when we get there. When you first learn your blues vocabulary and you first learn how to improvise over this, it's all minor pentatonic scales. That's a great place to start. When you're ready to sound more articulate, this is a great first step using these. Remember, find the root note of the chord on the B string. Down two frets or on the A E string. Down two frets and right above it. Then you go from this shape to your minor third, and then to your minor third again. You can play them at the same time. You can play them individually. You can mix rhythms, triple it, triple it, triple it, one, and boom. You can also slide into them. One thing, to keep in mind, it does sound better starting higher on the fretboard and working down as opposed to. But that doesn't mean you can't experiment going the other way as well. When the chord changes, repeat the exercise. A note, 15, 17, 14, 15, 12, 13. If I were to do the B note, I would take it two more frets up. There's my B note. So now I'm playing up here on the 17 and 19, 16 and 17, 14 and 15. Sounds great, highlights those notes. Just really, really good stuff. Use them in your blue soloing today. Impress your friends. Let them know where you learned it. 10 Thumbs Pro, take care. Catch you next Monday for some more guitar there. And until next time, have a lovely day. Keep on rocking and rolling. Life is good, my friends. If you're still kind of wondering a little bit why the E 
why are we playing the A dominant over the E scale? Well, the notes just work out. This is a B, and this is a D. The A7 chord, or the E7 chord rather, is an E note, which is your root. Then you have your third, which is the G sharp, your fifth, which is B, and the flat seventh, which is D. Root, third, fifth, seventh. Okay? Now, those notes here, D and a B. Those are two chord tones, the flat seventh and the B. This is the most stable of them. These are two notes in our chord. We can sit on this all day long, no problem. You can even, if you want to, mix in that E note with your pinky. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. That's basically an arpeggio, all chord tones. What do we got going here? This is a C sharp. Relative to our E7, this is what's called the sixth interval. And the sixth interval sounds great when it's played over the root. In fact, This is also a C sharp. So when you hear that boogie sound, all they're doing is going five, six, five, six. So this note sounds great. This note is an A note. And the A note is the fourth interval and it doesn't sound as good. It's a little more dissonant. Meaning when you play this one, you don't wanna hang out here for too long because this creates dissonance against your E7 chord and it's okay to play, but you don't wanna finish your lick here. What do we got going here? A B note, back to our fifth interval. And here we have a G note, which is the minor third. If you were to hammer on from here on the eight to nine, these are two chords here, but these two notes here sit right in the E minor pentatonic shape four. And our E minor pentatonic scale is common blues vocabulary. So we have chord tones, tension, E minor. And if we're over that E7, we can always go up, bend up, and play with these blue notes here because the difference between the G and the G sharp is what's called a blue note. Another lesson for another day, also very important to taking your soul to the next level. But that's not what we're doing today. We're just learning how to find these and how to use them in our solo. Excellent, everybody. Thank you for watching to the very end of this tutorial here at TenThumbsPro.com. We appreciate you learning with us, and I really hope that this lesson helps you as a player, helps you develop your skills, helps you feel more confident with the guitar, and if you're soloing and you feel a little lost, you always have a hot spot to go to to keep things fresh and nice. Catch you next Monday for guitar, ukulele Wednesday and Saturday. Think about becoming a Patreon, cheaper than a cheap cheeseburger, and until next time, have a lovely day. Rock and roll. Life is good, my friends. Take care.